Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This video is gonna be quick, it's gonna be straightforward. We're gonna have good info for you. So recently, I have been trying to get into a morning routine of kind of studying, trying to better myself, especially more in like the research and like the bug bounty and cybersecurity space, learning new techniques, learning, I guess, more advanced techniques, how other people are finding bugs, all that kind of stuff, right? And you hear people say, read the blog post, read activity, read bug crowd, CrowdStream, if you're trying to improve as a bug bounty hunter, and I kind of want to go over how I do it and try and fit it into a chunk of my day. Again, I choose it in the morning, but whether it's in the morning, in the evening, sitting at lunch, like super late at night, whatever it may be, I'm just going to show you what I do. You can take parts of this or all of it or none of it and do what you want to do with it. I'm just putting stuff out there. So I actually put this repo out in another video a while ago. This one on the screen, I just called it bug bounty blog list. It's on my GitHub. I will link the link in the description. But all it is, is there's some stuff here, we'll go over in a second, but there's a blogs.txt file here, and all it is, is just a list of all the blogs that I'm trying to read through completely and that I follow. So it's not necessarily people on Twitter that I follow or stuff like that, some of these people you will recognize from Twitter. This is a list, if you want to just like grab a list and start pulling stuff and go, these are blogs that I have found stuff in. Um, some of these I would definitely read, you know, literally front to back. Other ones, you know, pick and choose, again, according on like what your focus is. I know some of these will have like some Web3 stuff in them or mobile stuff in them or whatever it may be. And maybe you're just a web person or maybe you're one or the other. Whatever it is, these are ones that I would get started on and I would look at, pick the ones for you. Again, there's some here that I would definitely read all the way through, but these are all on my reading list to, to parse through and read how I want to do. So this is a starter one for you. I just updated this. If some of you guys follow me on Twitter, I kind of like blasted it out for people and was like, hey, what are blogs that you read that you listen to and pay attention to? And I added some of those in here that I checked and that I liked. I added some that I found since the last time we did this list. So this list is updated with, it looks like 66 blogs. If there's one in here that you have read that's not in my list, please feel free to create a PR or send it to me or however you want and we'll add it to here because I would like to know about it too, and we can put this in the list so other people can see it, right? So outside of this list, which just has a bunch of blogs to follow about cybersecurity and bug bounty, if you're interested in reading disclosed bug bounty reports to improve, which is a way that many other content creators and many other bug bounty hunters have said to study to improve is to obviously read the bugs that other people have disclosed, right? You could go to HackerOne, you could read through it. I think there's some other resources too to read through them. The best one, hands down, I mentioned this in the other video, I'm mentioning it in this video. The best resource, hands down, to find disclosed reports to read and study is Zishano's bugbountyhunter.com has a disclosed report section. This is what it looks like. And all it is, is it shows some stats here at the top from publicly disclosed reports from HackerOne. Again, this is HackerOne only, but the CrowdStream on BugCrowd is not that great at the moment anyway. You, right here, you can see recently disclosed stuff if you wanna see like the recent stuff. But over here, you can you know choose entries or whatever. You can search for stuff if you wanna search for a specific thing. Otherwise, it actually has everything separated out into HackerOne's vulnerability categories that they put stuff into. So if you're interested in cross-site scripting, DOM cross-site scripting, there is 106 disclosed reports in here that you can read right here. Here's your programs. Here's the various reports in no particular order with the program here and then the link to them, right? All of this is super sectioned off so you can be really specific. So if you're like, okay, for the next couple weeks, I just want to read DOM cross-site scripting, not reflected or, you know, like all that stuff. Like you want DOM stuff for like client side and JavaScript, whatever. Here you go, right? If you're interested in reading specifically on GitLab stuff, right? You can go through all of these things. I don't think there's a way to, to filter by program, but you can go into each one of these sections and then look at for your program. So let's say you're really interested in GitLab stuff. You can click on these four GitLab reports and you can go here and it will bring you to GitLab's page Right, and then from here, this brings you to a different thing, your program ID of GitLab, and here is where you can see all of their um, their disclosed reports. So you can't say like DOM XSS, like specifically by GitLab. This page tells you there's four of them, but then when you actually click on it, you go to this page and you'll have to sort by vulnerability type and then go search for it, right? So like you'll see them here. So it's not that hard, but yeah, that's how you would do that. 
And that's, again, how you can search by program, by vulnerability, or some version of the two. But this is the best resource I've seen to really do like some focus studying and focus research, whatever you want to call it, on HackerOne disclose reports, right? The other resource that I have here, Feedly, again, I'm not even going to show it, but it's just Feedly is like a, you put in a keyword and it gives you what it thinks are good blogs. So if you look for like top bug bounty blogs, a lot of these things already show up and like I think some YouTube channels and stuff show up of creators that you guys probably already follow if you follow me. But down here is another great resource. It's by Nahomsek by Ben. Again, it's just resources for beginner bug bounty hunters. There's a whole ton of stuff here. He has his stuff up here. And then there's all the table of contents of like basics. He has a list of blogs and talks, books, tools, labs, all this kind of stuff that goes way more in depth. And it's less about like just reading. And it's more about, you know, everything to do with bug bounty, right? So this is also a very cool one to look at. It looks like he was updated, like he updated it last year for like 2023 again. So it's, you know, very modern still, I would say, especially according to like some other stuff. So you have all of these things to read, whether it's blog posts, you know, PDFs, it's this stuff, whatever it may be. And again, maybe you're a YouTube person, same stuff. So you have articles, you have PDFs. Maybe you want to read some of the books in here. Maybe you want to watch some YouTube videos, whatever it may be, right? How do you do all this? and keep stuff together, take notes on it, highlight it, whatever it may be, right? Well, what I like to do is I like to use something called Readwise. So this is Readwise's reader. I think I have it over here, yep. So this is the 799 version, totally not sponsored by these guys. This is just the tool I use. Again, this is just stuff I use. I'm not sponsored by anybody, obviously, but I pay the 7.99 a month. It's way worth it. You get all this kind of stuff. You get daily reviews, all this kind of stuff. Great, yada, yada. But you get this reader thing, which is what I like. So this is Readwise's reader. So what you can do is I have an extension up here that you can, this one clicks and puts me right into Readwise, takes me right to here. But this yellow one here, this Readwise highlighter, gives pops a website or a blog or whatever you're looking at as we'll see here, it can be a video, it can be a tweet, it can be a PDF, even an email, books, whatever. You can literally load books right in here by drag and dropping like EPUB files, right? So if you get a no starch book, like no starch press will send you an EPUB book. You can literally take that, drop it right in here and you'll get it in this reader. And we'll go over like what it does in a second, but that's very cool. But you can see here, I have some stuff queued up in my just like regular articles stuff. So for instance, if I click into this one, it'll take me to this page, which is the reader, right? So what you can do is I can tag it. So I can say like, this is really good for, like this taught me stuff about, you know, it's front end, right? So there's probably gonna obviously be stuff about XSS in here. So I could tag this as like XSS and bug bounty and like whatever I wanna put in here. I can click this little thing right here and I can add notes as I go. I can be like, this is an interesting tactic, this is an interesting tactic, and it all saves it as notes in my Readwise. And I'll show you where those notes go, like where you can send those in a second but you save it to notes. It's in my inbox right now, which is this page is my inbox. There's inbox later and there's archive, right? So inbox is stuff that I want to read right now. Later is obviously stuff I'd like to read, but you know, maybe I'm just too clogged in my inbox. So you put it in later. I don't really use later, but you can. And then archive is after I read something, I archive it. So I still have it. I So if I see highlights from it or notes I took from it and I want to read the original, I know where it's at. It's in my archive, but that's for stuff I've already read. So as you're going through this, you can also, again, you can change it here or you can delete it, but you'll see here, it says auto highlighting. It's a little small, but what this means is as I'm reading this article in the Readwise reader, right? I can literally just click, like I'm copying and pasting like this, but when I let go, you'll see it highlighted it. So now I've made a highlight that'll get imported right into Readwise. I can just cancel it if I want to, but if I highlight this, I can add a note to this highlight I can add a tag to this highlight and you can do a bunch of other stuff too, right? But so you can do that highlighting, great. So you can do it in an article. Now this is coming from the browser extension. It's checked right here. Again, it's really small, but it's checked right here. The other thing I can do though is from the Readwise reader, if I just wanna read it, I can click on it and it will open it in the actual, like their actual read.readwise app up here. Now. I like this for some stuff, I don't like this for other stuff. So it doesn't always render stuff properly, like pictures and like some other stuff. So I normally like reading the original and highlighting the original 
because you have all the same power you do in the reader as you do here. You can subscribe and we'll go over this later, but like for certain blogs that it finds that has an, an RSS feed built in, it'll just give you this button so you can put it into your feeds, which if we go back here, you can see right down here, your feeds and you can manage your feed and you can click right on your feed and it'll bring stuff up into seen and unseen. So I've seen quite a bit of stuff. I think I can manage my feeds. So I have asset node in here. I'm gonna add a few more in here, but I have asset node in here just for like an example. But yeah, so it'll let you subscribe. It gives you summaries, gives you metadata, all this kind of stuff, right? Your progress, da 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 da. And you can still highlight in here, just like you can before, same thing, right? Now, the thing with the Readwise thing that I like is you can go here and you can do a bunch of stuff. So you can do ghost readers, you can do all the same like document tagging and noting and stuff like that. You can edit metadata. You can also open the original. So it'll just open the original right here and it'll do the same thing. It'll keep it in the reader so you can still highlight directly from the page. But one of the interesting things if you are in the reader is you can have it read it to you with text-to-speech. Same thing with this listen button here, same thing. So you can open the original in one screen and have it read to you on the other screen, like off screen. So that's sometimes what I like to do too in the morning is I like to have it read to me and do the text to speech while I follow along because sometimes like reading and listening at the same time does the like kind of double thing where you, I don't know, I just absorb information better and you can highlight as you go along and it'll read you and you can speed it up, slow it down, whatever, right? So you're kind of hearing the words as you read them. So you're not just like mindlessly reading through words, right? You can do it with this button here or this button here. Again, I use this constantly, it's great. Now, you take notes, you do highlights, you do all this stuff, you grab all the tactics out of it, you tag it, all this stuff, fantastic. But where does that actually go, right? So here, doesn't like this is the actual reader part, right? But when you're doing here, you can see, you can export highlights and your notes to Notion, Obsidian, and a whole bunch more. It does Notion, it does Obsidian, it does Evernote, it does Roam, it does just basic Markdown, it does LogSec. It does a ton of different things where you can sync all of your highlights and export them to Notion if you've Notion or Obsidian or basically any of your like note-taking apps, right? Or just basic Markdown too. Now, Readwise will also sync your highlights from other things. You can connect it to other things as well. So you can do it like if you have a Kindle and stuff like that, you can also take highlights from books and whatever. Again, do what you want with that. I use it for that as well, but is what it is. So any highlights I take here, if I have my stuff connected to Notion, which I do, and again, I'm, I'm not gonna show that just because there's a lot of stuff in there and I don't wanna have to go through like hiding certain stuff, showing certain stuff. All of my, all your highlights get dumped in a Readwise section in your Notion, listed, timestamped, all that kind of stuff, and you can drag and drop it anywhere you want from there, right? But it syncs everything all to your Notion, your notes, your highlights, all that kind of stuff, all comes out of Readwise into either Notion, which is what I use, or Obsidian, or whatever you wanna use. So you go basically from reading your blog, taking notes, all this stuff, and it drops it right in your note-taking app for you. You can organize it how you want to, which then makes you see the information again as you organize it, all that kind of stuff. And that all happens from this reader, right? The other cool thing, so this has all been articles so far, which is again, back to these like blog posts that I was talking about here. I'm going through these blog posts, but I also like to do YouTube just like some other people do. So down here, where is it? Down here is videos. So if you have YouTube videos, like I do, right here was articles, you have books, emails, PDFs, et cetera, et cetera. But in videos, well, I had linked into my Readwise a Franz Rosen video, because of course we all have to see and read everything that Franz puts out, right? So now what happens? When I open this up in Reader, it opens the video for me to watch, but it also opens the transcript. And I can do everything with the transcript that you can also do with the article. So as he's talking and the transcript is going, if I like something he says or like a tactic or a technique or whatever it may be, I can highlight it, I can add notes to it in my notebook here, I can add links to it, all that kind of stuff. And it all will get synced into whatever note taking app I'm using from Reader. So you can ingest all types of cybersecurity content. You can do the critical thinking videos, you can do blog posts, books, PDF articles if you're reading like research papers. There's a section for tweets in here if you wanna save tweets to this and then go through tweets, you can save it to here. 
So all you have to do is save it. So I'm gonna unsave this, right? So if I found this blog, like I went from my repo and went into here and found this blog and I want this blog. All you do with the Readwise extension, this Readwise highlighter is I just click it and it now adds it. Not only does it open it up in a reader so I can now like highlight it and stuff, but it will also put it back in this list of articles right here. It has a little green stamp because I technically just took it back and saved it again. So it's saved multiple times, right? But that that's how they end up here. So you just, if you're reading something that you're interested in or you see something you want to put in your inbox, you just click on this little, the yellow Readwise extension, it puts it in there and it opens it up in the reader. And then again, if you close that page or whatever and come back to it later, it'll be in here ready for you to read. You can also, like I said, anything that has RSS feeds, you can add them to your feed and it will notify you when new stuff comes in. You can grab it right out of the feed and you can throw it in your inbox and start reading it, right? So that's really all I have. Again, this is something I do in the morning. If you're drinking tea or coffee or whatever it is you wake up with, you got an hour to yourself, you got 30 minutes to yourself, you have a lunch break at night in front of the TV, whatever it is, while I'm ingesting content, I like to take notes, I like to highlight stuff so I feel like I'm actually getting information out of them. And this helps me tremendously doing that. And these are the blogs that I'm using. So these are the blogs and those are the tools that I'm using to better myself every day. I do a little bit every day. It's just little progress every day. If my morning little session only lasts for 30 minutes and then I have a work call or whatever it may be, then that's fine. And maybe I get back to it, maybe I don't. But making that little bit of progress, we've talked about it on the channel all the time, this is how I do that. That's how I capture information to save for later. Again, when it's in Notion, I organize it in my own way. You can do whatever you want to with it. But this is what I do. I encourage you to check it out. Let me know what you think. Again, if you have a blog that's not in this list and you go check it out, send a PR, send it to me over DM, whatever it is, we'll get it in there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.